Salutations to respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland. This is a river cruise on the Moscow River. There you can see Peter the Great behind me. Peter the Great is a famous Tsar, uh, took over at the end of the 18th, sorry, 17th century. Um, he ruled with his uh, sister briefly and his mother had to be regent, so father of the modern Russian Navy. And he famously shifted the capital from this city to St. Petersburg, as in the city which bears his name. It was a swampy area on the river Neva, um, and infected by all sorts of problems. But nevertheless, he built a magnificent city, got architects and engineers from Italy to make it absolutely world-class. This window on the west tried to modernize the country, bringing in attacks on beards, even modernizing it subtle, really. And had his great embassy to the west as a gate to the Netherlands, Germany, and England to learn the art of boat building. Famously worked in Deptford for a while um, under the guise of just being a Russian uh, boat builder. You can see a huge statue at Deptford, London. Uh, so that's him. He's memorialized in that uh, colossal statue there. There's Boltchuga Island behind us, as in mud, well, often known as Bolota, as in Mud Island. The Red October factory there, most famous confectionery factory in the Soviet Union, no longer exists on that site, the Red October factory. Red October, of course, being an allusion to the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917. And there are many nightclubs there and a few high-end eateries, a fantastic Georgian restaurant. Uh, so, anyway, we're on the um, north channel of the Moscow River. There's a south channel on the other side of this island. Um, so we're not very far from uh, Borovitskaya Hill, which was the site of the original settlement here um, in ancient times. So Moscow's uh, just gone over 900 um, years old. So the first written reference from Yuri Dalgaruki, as in Yuri Longarm, saying, come and have dinner with me in Moscow. And a letter was found, and that's the first recorded mention of the city. So we're coming up to the um, house on the embankment, where it's got a, it's got a the Estrada theatre in it. And uh, many um, uh, of the Soviet elite live there, politicians, uh, was one party state, generals, film directors, and the like. So uh, it's a 1930s uh, uh, building and very ahead of its day, architecturally speaking. So this is this curious sort of letter C shaped island with little gardens in it, churches and so on, exceptionally uh, historic. Um, so it's, it was built on very much till, till the early 19th century, partly because it was prone to flooding. You'll see how high they built the embankments to prevent flooding. And obviously the river is, 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 is frozen solid for at least four months a year. Now above us you're soon going to see a pedestrian bridge connecting the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour with um, uh, Bolshuga Island and on the, on the other side to the mainland again. So the Zamoskovskaya um, area, which is the area immediately south of the island. Uh, okay, you can see this old church here. Okay, finally we're coming up to the house on the embankment. This um, grey, um, almost light pink coloured building. It goes, it's very deep and it's quite wide. It's got some courtyards inside to afford uh, some sunlight to the uh, flats uh, inside. Anyway, you can get all these river cruises. They start in um, uh, late March and they go on to the end of October. Then the river tends to, tends to be uh, frozen so they are discontinued. Very worth going on. You can get them for as little as an hour, as little as 800 rubles a head. And they can be up to 2,000 rubles and you can have ones where they serve lunch. Obviously lunch costs extra. So really highly recommended. Well worth going on a river cruise if you are here in Moscow. Um, and some of them they pick you up at one point, drop you off at the other. Some of them do they take you to one place and do and just do a round trip, come back to where you started. See, Radisson ones are, are fairly expensive. This is a small Radisson one. They're larger, more, more opulent Radisson boats. So finally coming to the end of the house, the embankment gives you an idea just how long it is. So we're coming up to a bridge here that was built um, in the 1930s and it goes from just beside the Kremlin. Uh, and uh, the, on that Balchuk Island is the British ambassador's residence and so on. Where, and also where Maurice Touré spent the Second World well, War. Maurice Touré was the leader of the French Communist Party. He took it over in the 1930s as a fairly young man. And um, in 1940 he fled France because it was, it was um, annexed by the Third Reich. He came here to the Soviet Union and he broadcast on the radio in French to France telling them to carry on resisting uh, the occupation by the Axis powers. Um, and um, we would always say his, in his broadcast he was somewhere in France, which was a lie. He was hiding here in Moscow. But there's a plaque on the building where he lived 
and uh, he had very cordial relations with the Soviet Union and the communists were some of the most uh, ardent um, uh, resistance fighters in France and he returned to France obviously after the Second World War thinking he would play a major part in government and the Communist Party had a lot of credibility amongst the French public and sometimes secured as much as 20% of, of the vote it was briefly part of a coalition government right at the end of the Second World War um, and de Gaulle was president but the Communists never managed to be uh, the um, dominant force in French society um, as they had here but, uh, and he died in about 1960 uh, Maurice Touré I wonder if I can point out the building where he lived when we come to it. You can see a lot of things under renovation here. Um, so uh, that was that. Charles de Gaulle, he was the um, chairman of the French Committee of National Liberation in the Second World War, and he and Maurice Touré didn't entirely get on. De Gaulle was an anti-communist, but he recognized that the Soviet Union was going to be a lot mightier after the war than they had been before, and uh, that France desperately needed their help. And so it would be politic to maintain cordial relations with the Soviets. There ought to be French soldiers serving on all fronts in that war. So um, that's why uh, de Gaulle, he had some French soldiers dispatched. Just a token number to buy here. That's the British ambassador's residence. A very wealthy businessman built in the late 19th century. In the 60s, it became the UK ambassador's residence until then it had been a state guest house. I was there for a party and it's wonderful. It looks directly onto the um, Grand Kremlin Palace. So that's that. Um, so I can't tell quite where the Maurice Touré building is. Um, anyway, what else? So Charles de Gaulle, as I was saying, he uh, visited Moscow in 1944. He flew to Baku, I think from London, obviously not directly. He spent one night in Baku. Flew on to Moscow for a few days, uh, consultations with the Soviet government, and flew back to Baku, where he insisted on spending two nights before returning to the United Kingdom, where it actually might have been France at that stage. So uh, you can see how uh, some of the neoclassical style, a various um, friezes on the front of the buildings, these um, Doric columns, the uh, and obviously doing the uh, showing the ancient Greek ratio, which they felt denoted beauty in three to eight. Now, a bit of Gazprom's headquarters. Gazprom, this company, is the largest gas producer on Earth. Um, oh, so it's Rosneft in there. Gazprom is in another building around here. There, that's it. That's where Maurice Torre lived. This building right here. I'm just seeing the plaque now. So there you are. All right, so uh, we're coming up to another bridge. And I can't remember the name of this bridge, but it connects to the other end of the Kremlin. Um, the Kremlin's behind us, we won't bother looking at it. And on this bridge, there was a most unfortunate incident a few years ago where a certain gentleman, um, he collided with some lead at high velocity. Uh, and that was the end of him. So uh, that's that. All right, so there's some very um, uh, high-end hotels over here and pubs and things like that. Statue of uh, Dimitrov, the Bulgarian uh, communist leader, is also a Soviet citizen. Um, so uh, that's enough, I think, on uh, Balchuga Island.